It's John O'Shea, it's Godolphin, it's also the Stan Fox, and they've provided the last two winners of the Caulfield Guineas. Yeah, very much so, and the Sydney horses have won four of the last five Guineas, haven't they? So it really is a question of Sydney versus Melbourne horses, and you get the feeling that the Sydney horses uh, have got the edge at the moment, and obviously impending being the favourite, he was a really impressive winner of the Stan Fox. Divine Profit came through that, as did Good Standing. I think those horses are all in the market. I like Sacred Elixir, but possibly looking for a bit more distance going forward um, but it's going to be a fascinating contest impending's done some good work at osborne park going left-handed which will be crucial for for here at caulfield and he had the blinkers on last start which really lit him up he's got them on again today so he really ticks a lot of boxes Bread club stakes for the three-year-old fillies that set weights and penalties and Selene, of course, quite a surprise, Francesca, when she won the champagne. How's she come on? She sure did it. 41. That was a huge result under today's job, Jai McNeil. She's come back from a broken leg. Um, and she looks really well in the yard. She's not overly big. Um, she's got the blinkers on again today. Um, she's reopposing some of the horses she met the other day, and she's meeting them worse off at the weights, which is why she's around the $15 mark. Tough little filly. You can't rule her out. Sponsors form. She ran well in the Melbourne Cup Carnival. I loved her in the autumn as well. And she's come up, I think, don't you, Jessica? Yeah, she sure has. She was a good fourth in the Champagne Stakes, coming home late and fast. My query is, is she looking for a little bit further now? But she's got barrier two, so she's probably going to have to press forward and she'll be right up in the mix. She looks really well here with a different form mind to quite a lot of the other runners. She's only run twice. Um, she's won her first and then she was second to Scarlet Rain, who was then one of the leading fancies in the slipper. Um, I'm interested that the punters have really come for her. Yes, that trial win was impressive, but she's still got a little bit of learning to do. She lo does look magnificent in the mountain yard and had no luck whatsoever. If you see the replay, she was stuck on the rail, couldn't get through horses. Um, she's still quite inexperienced. She's had the her first win, which she won, run, which she won, and then uh, was luckless in the champagne stakes. She's a long, lengthy filly, um, nearly there in the coat, just got a little bit to come. But, um, yeah, come on, she was so unlucky, and I think punters have really latched onto that fact. And They can go into a Caulfield Cup. And is it a reflection on the number and quality of stairs around It's the certainly moment? a reflection on the number. Uh, there's no doubt, and, and probably the quality. No, it's a fair point, because the numbers for all the cups this year are down. Mm. Age Francis, he's come a long way in a short time, this horse. Yeah, he sure has. Three successive wins leading into today. The thing with this horse is he has to lead. Um, and there's a little bit more pressure in this race today than he's faced in the past. Um, looking at him in the yard, he's a big, tall, rangy, leggy kind of horse. Not what I would have expected for a son of Exceed and Excel. Not what you normally look for in a 1,400-metre horse. But he likes to gallop. He'll go out in front and he'll gallop stunning looking. New Zealand Derby winner over a mile and a half, but I think 2,000 metres is probably more his preferred distance. Interesting that he's having his second run this prep, again over 1,400, which I'd say is a bit short for him. So he's probably one that's on the way up. Oh, uh, Cheska, exclusive last. She actually ran in this race last year. She comes off a good run last start. Yes, yeah, she does. She was third in that run there. And she, I think he's um, heading towards the uh, Black Pearl, the listed race at Geelong, which she also won last year. So this might be a bit of a stepping stone towards that. She's quite a big price still. She's a nice looking filly, quite heavy top. She's a daughter of Nikoni. Um, Cheska, uh, Jalan, Jalan, and look very promising, but she hasn't quite delivered yet. Yeah, but she's got her quirks, this filly. I heard uh, Colin Little saying that she went for a gallop this week and she was uh, scheduled to work half an hour later than normal and she didn't like that, so she had threw a bit of a fit, threw herself on the ground, didn't want to go out to the track, took off in the gallop, so she's definitely got a few quirks, this one. And apparently she doesn't like being inside horses in the race, so, you know, she needs a lot of things to go right for her, but she's definitely got ability. In a word, no. Do you? Well, look, he's he, wings. he's the junkyard dog, isn't he? He's really going to serve it up to her now. Darren Weir's had him for eight starts, and he's won three at Group 1 level. Uh, I think the key is here over the mile and a quarter is how slow does he go for that first, you know, 10 furlong even time before they start sprinting at the uh, 800. Is that what you predict? Yeah, well, the general conclusion seems to be that he will lead because he's the only one of the three that has led in the past. You, I would have thought he or she would try and lead and try and steal it from the front because there's no chance he can win coming from behind them. Yeah. But the general... Th feeling is that Backheart Bart will lead. I imagine Winks will want to sit on his girth, just follow him wherever he goes. 
She can lead if no one wants to. She's so versatile, she can do whatever. Mm. Look, Black Heart Bart's a good horse. He's been progressing all the time, going up in distance, but he's been beaten. He's been beaten by Under the Louvre. He's been beaten by Palantino. He's yep. no winks. So if you're Craig Williams and you're riding he or she, are you quite happy just to run third and earn $100,000, or do you want to do something spiteful and maybe take off at the 1,000-metre mark, whip around them, and then try and rack and stack and play some games? Well, he's going to finish third, best, uh, worst result, whatever, so he might as well try and do something. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah, whether he, I think, because his best, his good win was over a mile at Flemington, Blamey. where there was a really strong pace. So I think he might be one that's looking for 2,000 meters. So I, I why want to not, see why not somebody be creative. Test? I want to see somebody be creative, and it just might be Craig Williams. Like rags to riches story. He's just that real tough, gritty horse that doesn't know how to run a bad race. Um, and he's, he is stepping up to 2,000 metres for the first time. But come on, he's trained by Darren Weir, who knows more than anyone how to train a stayer. He's a lovely looking horse. He's nice and calm. He's got a really big, kind eye on him. Um, she present today. Yeah, she's a lovely filly, actually. She's quite long and rangy type, um, quite a leggy filly. Um, I think Henry Dwyer said himself that he wouldn't it wasn't the ideal lead up he would have wanted to run in the in the guineas prelude instead of going to bendigo and running on a on a heavy 10 against older horses and the males but she came through that well um she's got nice condition on her i don't think she's taken too much uh... Miska, this is the horse that you're involved with you have ownership of global glamour she's a group one winner already but this is the big question how does she look because she can get excited yeah she can get excited you know what bruce this is actually the first time i've ever seen my filly um wasn't there when she was bought and i haven't been able to get to the races to see her win um look she's the only filly proven at a mile and that was at a group one level so that you can see why a lot of punters are coming for her today she's actually nice and big and round and strong um, um, there's not a huge amount of her. She's uh, quite light-framed, quite light through the middle. But her last start really showed that she was coming through with a lot of promise and hopefully just peaking today. She's got the blinkers on, help her concentrate. And she's probably the one, well, I would say, to fend off the Sydney invasion. Do we call her a Melbourne horse? I think she's a Kiwi. Yeah, she is very much in the market. She's um, quite a, a long, rangy filly. She looks a little bit like she might be more suited by longer distances, but she's done nothing wrong so far. A um, little bit wintry looking and a touch sweaty. Maybe I can get a quick word with Regan Bayliss. How are you feeling heading out into such an important big race? Yeah, very confident. She's very relaxed in the yard here today, and um, I expect her to run really well. Good, Good luck. luck. I'm pretty nervous, I have to say. I haven't had a, much of a chance to think about it until now. I'm standing here with Katrina Murphy, another part owner in Global Glamour. How are you feeling? Very nervous. <laughs> it's a one-in-a-lifetime opportunity, obviously, and it's just great to be part of it. Yeah, and you're no stranger to, to racing and to good horses being the owner of Sledmere Stud. But tell me, what got you involved with Global Glamour? Well, I think, really, we were all up at the Gold Coast and we are having such great time. And I th Global Glamour, Whispering Brook, and I am a star, but Global Glamour gives Gay a thousand guineas. She wins it from I am a star and Whispering Brook again third. Fox Play got motoring late. Don't know whether she handled the course, really. They're followed by Harlow Gold, Seabrook, Dream making late ground, La Luna Ross a weekend out, and then came Smart Amelia. Some in complete disbelief. I didn't let myself even think she might win until the last hundred meters, and then she just kept going. What a tough filly! I mean, she just led all the way, she had to come across from a wide barrier. They were coming at her, but she'd stuck on. That was unbelievable. As you can see, gay. how good was she there? Oh, uh, wasn't she? She was immaculate because she's never been to Caulfield. She arrived here in uh, Victoria, literally five days ago. And she's done nothing but improve and improve Absolutely. and improve. Absolutely. And may I say, I'm talking to one of the global glamour owners. <laughs> well, I have a very small share, but it's so exciting. And here they all are. <laughs> So the owners come from Ireland, England, France, Monaco, USA, Australia, New Zealand. 40 shares in this horse global glamour and it's just been a fantastic... I knew you were going to steal that one, Bruce. I've studied long and hard to, to come up with the ultimate pedigree for a, for a Caulfield Guineas horse. But yes, like you say, his mum won the thousand, his dad won the Caulfield Guineas. Couldn't be 
better bred for this, and he is a stunning individual. He's not overly big, but what I like about him is that he's really nice and strong, really relaxed in the yard, ticks all the boxes, comes through the stut stakes, that's the, um, that's the big form guide for this race. Cheska Haydock's taken all before him this spring. Yeah, he sure has. He's won his three starts this prep um, and it kept improving with each run. Um, so he actually did win the start stakes. I got that wrong earlier. Um, and really impressively, he, he pinged away from them. and did it in. Waterhouse and Adrian Bott. Evacuation, uh, there's been a lot to like about uh, his preparation. And wouldn't that be a story if Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott could win the two of the guineas on the same day? Look, this horse came to Melbourne with quite a good reputation. He was well fancied in the, in the guineas prelude, but he, I think he got a little bit lost around the bend. He couldn't get down to the rail. Francesca, well, he's got a bit of class awesome rock, hasn't he? He's a, he's a wait for age winner. Yeah, he sure does. I think that's um, what really plays into his favour. Obviously, he has got top weight as a result of that, but four of the last six winners have been 58 kilo top weight, so that um, that's a pretty good statistic in his favour. He's a gorgeous-looking horse, really catches the eye. He's still a bull. He has got the Norton bit on, but that's all is, and he's one of the most backed horses of the day, which is why it's good to have a good look at him in the mountain yard. If I'm honest, I probably would have preferred to see him a little bit more forward in the coat. I don't I don't know if you can tell, but he's still a little bit fluffy, which adds a lot today. Well, Counter Attack needs a Group One, doesn't he? He's a reduced choice. They're desperate to get that Group One for him. Yes, he sure does. He's one of the most unlucky horses in training, I have to say. Um, I'm a bit confused because he has never run over the mile and he hasn't won a 1400. So this is really stretching him in terms of stamina. Um, they're taking the blinkers off him, which should help him to settle to get the trip. Moral victory. Um, Cheska, all the Sydney siders reckon this is a different horse this spring. He's grown a leg. Yeah, well, it's interesting because he's a seven-year-old, but he seems to have hit a rich, fame of, rich vein of form of late. Um, Tim Martin knows what he's doing, and he's coming into this race with quite a nice lightweight. That's because he hasn't really... Well, he's still going up and through the long, very long. When I used to do it with... Um, I did it with Bauer and Purple Moon and all of those. We used to go from England to Ireland to Sharjah, which is near Dubai, to Singapore to Australia. So, yeah, it's very long. The Godolphin horses have their own plane, so that's it's a little bit quicker. <laughs> Yeah. He decided, right, catch me if you can. And no one really expected Wicklow Brave to win that day because his form leading in had been OK without being incredible. Um, but that piece of form coming into Melbourne Cup is pretty good. Right. Fifth in a, in a Melbourne Cup last year where he led. Personally, I wish he'd gone a little bit faster because he's just got serious stamina. This horse, he'll stay all day. Jamie Spencer's going to ride him again. Um, I think he's a worthy... Mm, big chance. Is he favourite or he's right up there? He'll be up there. Mm -hmm. What about the e-board? Now, that's the big handicap race at York. Uh, and He's got quite a lightweight for the Melbourne Cup, mm, Heartbreak City. 53 so or something, hasn't he? Yep, yeah, lightweight. Um, this is Group 1's in, in Europe. And I know he's really flying under the radar because it's all about Winks and Hartnell, but... He's definitely worth keeping an eye on. He'll want to be good because the horse that ran third in the Cox Plate last year ran second in the Peter Arc Triumph this year. You've got to be a good horse to win a Cox Plate. Exactly. Um, I just wanted to get a little dig in about the Aussies <laughs> against the international. Scottish. Lightly race. 2,400 metres. He finished second over 2,400 to Highland Reel at Goodwood the year before. But I think he's an exciting horse. I think he's still improving. Um, and I know Godolphin are very happy with him. So it just sets apart a really good horse. Oh dear, this is embarrassing. Do we really need to do this? Well, we, we can't help ourselves. Well, Katrina and I were watching, keeping very quiet. And it was really only in the last 100 metres that we thought, oh gosh, he's actually got a really good um, chance here. Cheska, would you... It's great stuff, isn't it? I mean? <laughs> because um, they've done a brilliant job with the mare. Personally, I thought she'd be um, doing well to get to a mile because by, by a sprinting stallion. Um, I think they'll see how she pulls up from the race and there'll be plenty of tempting options, but whatever's best for the mare, I'd say. Philly, even. And then 